this New York Post article uh, about Joe Namath. So the headline read, Jets legend Joe Namath accused of allowing child sex abuse at his football camp. This broke this week. Now that that was the headline, okay? With the the word allowing in there is is particularly troubling. Then I went through and read this article twice here, two different times. A couple snippets are this guy, Philip Lyle Smith, who's 64 years old, recently told the Post about a horrific ordeal at one of Joe Namath's instructional football camps. This was in 1972, so this is 51 years ago. And he's speaking publicly for the first time as he detailed claims about uh, uh, ongoing, uh, an ongoing sexual predator who was a well-known Brooklyn poly prep football coach, this guy, uh, Philip uh, Fogaletti, Fogaletta, something like that, um, who's already passed away, who's already died, who's already was, was convicted of being a pedophile. So that much we at least know. But I went through and read the article here, and there was absolutely zero evidence presented that Joe Namath knew anything about this or tried to cover anything up. I wanted to see what you guys thought. Well, yeah, I, I read it too, and, and I agree with you. I, I believe in, in due process. Right, I, I want all the facts to come out before I typically opine on something like this, but just kind of my instinct and, and my gut tells me, you know, it was Joe Namath's football camp, right? That's, yes. That, that, that's what it was, and his name was on it. And if, if you know how these camps work, like I don't think Joe Namath, if it's like any other camp with any big time celebrity that I've seen, whether they be an athlete something like, or anything else in the entertainment industry, they're not really there for the inner workings of what's going on. Mm-hmm. They show up, they make an appearance, they sign stuff. You go out and eat food and, and hang out with guys. I, you know, you were talking to, to somebody that you know that's close to the situation. I'm gonna let all the facts come out, but I, I just don't think Joe Namath is the type that's exactly hands on when it comes. This is awful. Yeah. Number one, I mean, you know, uh, you know what I think about that. I, I don't think it's any secret what any of us think about that that situation. But I, I think the word allowing there, like you said, w- without any concrete evidence that Joe Namath had any idea mm-hmm. this was going on or that Joe Namath just showed up, right? If something if something happens in Walmart like this, they don't go and say Sam Walton yeah. allowed this <laughs> yeah. just because he's the one who started it, right? Or mm-hmm. he had been to that Walmart one time. I, I, I just have a hard time, regardless of what you think about Joe Namath, uh, I just instinctually, I have a hard time feeling he knew the inner workings of what was going on in that camp enough for sure. Um, to, to, to be allowing this. I saw a lot of people yesterday talking about the fact that this was 51 years ago and you have statute of limitations. Again, the statute of limitations, that can only help you in you know the legal justice system, mm-hmm. not in God's justice system. Like if somebody still did something morally wrong, I'd like to know about it no matter how long after the fact it yeah. was. But I, I talked to my father-in-law yesterday, Richard Todd, who you guys know, he, he played with Joe Namath at the Jets. He said, I was president at a lot of these camps. I would show up, like Joe would show up you know, shake hands, take some pictures with the campers, and then we'd all go out and eat, you know, to 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 think that Joe Namath would understand the logistical bunking arrangements between all of the coaches and the kids. That's just hundreds that's not of how kids, this. hundreds of kids every week. They bring them in. They, and then this this guy, um, you know, and I absolutely hate what happened to this guy because this clearly affected him in a very negative way at the age of 12 years old. Like the guy, the, the pedophile guy in this situation, there's no layer of hell deep enough to send him to. I agree. And that, and that much cannot be argued. I just, it, it troubles me to see Joe Namath's name bring brought up into it when there was there's there's no evidence right now of a correlation and to and to draw some parallel between um Joe Paterno and the Jerry Sandusky case when Joe Paterno there's evidence that says he knew about this yeah. talked to the AD talked to the president and then collectively they decided not to not to act on it that's a very different situation to me and it's oh, unacceptable yeah. if it came out that Joe Namath somebody came up to Joe Namath and said hey this is happening and then he still brings and the guy back still to still brings camp. the guy back that's a different story yeah. but I want to I want to let it play out but just off the cuff, just instinctually, Joe Namath doesn't doesn't feel like the type of guy that would that they would even go to and say, "Hey, this this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, whatever." Uh, but again, we'll we'll let the evidence come out. It's a horrible story. Yeah. Uh, either way, you know what? That's that's awful. Um, and it's it's sick and twisted. Mm. But I, I just I have a hard time believing that that Joe Namath knew exactly what was going on. But we'll see. Who knows? All right, unless you have anything on this. Well, you know, I just don't know why it takes 51 years for this stuff to come out. Mm. 
I just don't understand it. I'll never understand it. Like, if something happened, like, you need to come out and say it. Like, I mean, you need to come out and tell as many people as you can so you can get this handled. But you wait 50 years for it to come out? I, I, I know it's skeptical to look at, but some people, they, they don't approach it that way. Like, you, you have a bunch of people that are victims of certain things that don't want to talk about it, whether they're out of fear of, of what, you know, the person who did it to them or out of embarrassment for letting other people know that this happened to them. There's a lot of different reasons. So, so I, I get what you're saying. You would think eventually, but there's a lot of reasons why people don't, don't, we see this in domestic cases with women who are afraid to come out and say, my husband's beating the heck out of me mm-hmm. because they're scared to death because they got to go back home. Like it's, it just, again, I wonder how long ago that guy died. That's what, that's the Fogaletti guy that, that got yeah, accused but, of. I mean, I, I have yeah. it right he was here. in 98. So like to me, if you're going to have a problem with it, if it's not embarrassment of the situation, which again, if it's 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 a horrible thing that happened to somebody, 98, wait until 2023, I can understand that. But there's a lot of reasons why people don't come forward about certain things. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's just the kind of human nature. Yeah, look, as as the if, if evidence changes in this case, uh, obviously we'd oh, I'll be the first be brought one. up and, um, and, and, and we'll see what happens. Everybody on YouTube, it's Rivalry Week. But guess who's not a rival? Us, unless you disagree with us. But that's fine. We encourage dissent. By the way, while you're here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, turn that notification bell on so you can find out every time that we drop content.